Okay, today really quick, we're gonna be talking about aviation safety. One question, how many of you think that safety is the most utmost important thing? Well, me being your error nerd today and a CFI, I don't think that safety is the most utmost important thing. But wait, before you go to the next video, just wait, hear me out first. Just <laughs> If safety was the most utmost important thing to you, I think, personally, you should have just stayed home a bit. Why? Because you're gonna get out of bed, you're gonna get ready, you're gonna drive to the flight school. Let's say by miracle you make it there alive. And for those of you who live in Florida, you know exactly what I mean by these crazy drivers out there. So yay, hey, we we're alive, we made it to the flight school, yay. Now let's go put ourselves in a three by five fiberglass box surrounded by flammable fuel on the wings. Now we're about to go fly up in the air with other congested airspace and there's no parachutes and safety is the most utmost important thing. He's gonna be three, four, five, eight, ten, two thousand, and uh, contact with you. Seven left, five, five, six, take Welcome, safety enthusiasts. I am Ty Jones, your air nerd and CFI. I am gonna be talking to you about real aviation safety. Now, safety is very important. The reason why I mentioned that earlier is because I want you to make sure you understand the depth of safety. Now, if you just say safety is just the most important thing, yes, I mean, what, what does that even mean? It's very rote, it has no meaning to it. But if you really put in perspective what you, the, the dangers that you put yourself into each and every day you fly, then we can talk about safety because now you understand what it really means to follow your checklist, to understand what ADM really means and how important it really is. Instead of, well, I gotta remember this I'm safe checklist. The side model, what is this? Risk elements, the five P's, the plan, the plane, the pilot, the passengers, and the program. The five hazardous attitudes. What? The PAVE checklist, the pilot, the aircraft, the environment, the external pressure. There's a 5P model, and to make it even more confusing, there's also a 3P model. I mean, it seems like a lot. I'm not gonna go into everything. This video is gonna be a lot shorter than normal. But the reason that I wanna make this video, okay, I won't say it anymore. <laughs> but the reason why I wanted to make this video is because the last video I made was how to become a pilot fast. And if you haven't seen that video, you can click it right there. But one thing I missed out on was to talk about safety. And I think that's kind of important to talk about when you're trying to be a pilot. So I'm going to make this short video for you just to give you a hint of the importance of safety. So I want you guys to do your checklist. I want you guys to do the ADM and follow ADM and understand what it really means. The reason why is because everything in aviation kind of revolves and revolves around safety. Okay, I can stop revolving now. I mean, I understand, flying is fun. You just want to get up there and fly. It's about safety. I don't care about safety. I just want to fly. Uh, no, you need to take this serious. So what I'll do is I'll give you some references. I'm not going to go into too much detail. I know you guys got other things better to do like flying, but I want to give you some references and some other tips and tricks and why safety is so important. One tip that'll help you become a better safe pilot is attention to detail. For example, how many times has my pen moved on uniform since you watched this video? Now this is just a small example. Yes, attention to detail has a lot more to do with just safety, but just to give you an example, if you really understand the fine points and all the checklists and all the items and understand why we have to do the items that we do on the checklist, then you're one step closer to being becoming a safe pilot. Take this stuff seriously, guys. There's pilots that unfortunately lose their lives because of this stuff because either they're missing a step or they just skipped one step and it resulted in an untimely death. So. Please take this seriously. I care about you guys. This is one of the reasons why I post these videos in the first place. If I can have one of my videos save a life or one of my videos help you fly better or anything like that, then I felt that I have done something amazing. All right, so starting off with the most important thing, Advisor Circular 60-22, which will give you every single thing you need to know about aeronautical decision making or ADM for short. The second recommendation that I go to is the P-Hack. I highly recommend you go here. Um, the next thing is the NTSB website. The reason why I recommend going here is because you can learn a lot from other people's failures. So if you know that 
hey, we had a gear up landing because I forgot to do this step after this step. If you know that, then consciously you may be thinking about that next time you're coming in on final in a complex aircraft. The fourth thing that I recommend is if your flight school has safety bulletins, please read those. Inside those safety bulletins, they normally have previous pilot deviations or errors like hey this month we had a lot of airspace violations or we had a lot of pilot deviations because of this this or that so with that knowledge again that'll be on the back of your mind when you are flying the next thing you definitely want to make sure you're flying an airworthy aircraft so this acronym aviates which a is for your annual inspection v is for your vor inspection the i is actually for the number one for a hundred hour inspection a is for altimeter t is for transponder e for elt and s is for your static inspection now quiz do you need all of these items in order to fly a normal vfr flight without hire just you and yourself how many of these things do you actually need in order to fly put your answers below to see if you're right the next thing is okay let's say the aircraft is good but that means absolutely nothing if you are not fit to fly so here's some items that you can look at to make sure that you are good to go is the I'm safe checklist I'm pretty sure if you're a student pilot or if you are already a seasoned pilot you will be very very familiar with this checklist let's start with the I I is for illness if you're ill make sure you don't fly M is for medication obviously if you're on some strong medications common sense should tell you that you should not fly if you're stressed out by anything that's another indicator you know we're, we're all humans if we're stressed most likely we could make some mistakes alcohol be smart be smart here's some references too for alcohol 6115 and 9117 uh, those are some references that you can go to um, to find out more information about the alcohol F is for fatigue if you're fatigued obviously again common sense you don't want to fly if you're fatigued mainly long cross country if if you're flying for a long time you're just getting more fatigued and more fatigued it, just go ahead and land and, and get a hotel and E is for emotion or eating I've heard them both over the years but uh, I, I know that if people don't eat some people don't eat they tend to get very emotional in the very bad way <laughs> so or the other term is hangry uh, the next one is we're going to go into the baby checklist now this is just another uh, checklist that you can check on yourself so P is for the pilot A is for aircraft V is for environment and E is for the external pressure so again pilot can kind of relate to the I'm safe checklist make sure the pilots all good to go aircraft and make sure the aircraft is all good environment if you're going cross country and there's a huge storm I know we have a huge hurricane on the way right now to Florida but if you have a huge storm and you're not comfortable if you don't have the experience then guess what I guess you're flying on, on another day and then finally E is external pressures if there is that storm ahead and you have uh, you have a lot of pressure to make it there or you have passengers back there saying hey we can make it because if I don't make it then I'm gonna get fired or I'm I need to get there for an interview or what have you make sure you don't have those external pressures so that is the PAVE checklist next let's go into the five P's we have plan pilot plane passengers and programming so plan let's say if you have TFRs you want to make sure that you do proper planning you don't want your flight plan to go through a TFR or um, you want to make sure you have your cross-country planning planned out accordingly so you have enough fuel on board and so on and so forth pilot again goes back to the pave and goes back to the I'm safe checklist notice it's going over the pilot twice now plane again there's the aviates passengers make sure your passengers aren't intoxicated or anything or belligerent or anything like that or causing you to have external pressures and lastly programming the last P the fifth P program is more for the aircraft instrumentation avionics like for example if your aircraft has GPS ADS-B autopilot you definitely want to make sure that those are working so now we can go into the hazardous attitudes one of my favorites I could not remember this to save my life so what I did is I came up with my own acronym called I'm air starting with I impulsivity don't be impulsive just wait take your time do the checklist don't try to rush through anything that's impulsivity M is macho. Hey, I can do it. I can do anything. And even though I have icing on the wings, hey, I can make it another 50 miles even though I don't have any kind of de-icing on my aircraft. Uh, come on. Anti-authority is saying if the tower is telling you something and you say, no, I'm not going to do that. Or you're being instructed to do something because the, the weather is up ahead. Or you have a traffic advisory and you're saying, no, I, I'll just keep flying straight and I'll turn when I see him. That's anti-authority. Definitely don't want to have that, that attitude. The next is the I for invulnerability. 
Yes, it can happen to you. Don't think that you are just invincible for anything that can happen. And lastly, to make up the IMAIR is resignation. Don't resign, folks. If there is if you have an engine failure, don't resign and just give up. Whatever you have to do, just keep trying. Never stop trying. Always, always, always keep trying. Keep doing a checklist, emergency checklist. This is why a lot of accidents happen. They they freak out and they say that, hey, I did this checklist. I did that. There's no place to land. Screw it. I'm just, I guess we're just, we're just done for. So never stop trying. Do your troubleshooting all the way down to the ground. If in an event that you have an engine failure or any kind of other, uh, other, event that you have to do an emergency checklist. With that said, I told you that I would leave this short and I will just leave you with that. Okay, so that's it for today. As promised, I wanted to keep this video as short as possible. So I'll go ahead and end this by saying keep flying, keep learning, and always have fun. I'll see you guys next time. Where is my pen?